Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Greetings from Tennessee. We're all sitting up and taking nourishment, and as my granddad said, that's about all you can hope for. We're gonna talk about a gun today that has some interesting characteristics. One, it's a scarce gun to begin with, and two, it had a conversion by a neat German-American. The gun itself we have here is a US model 1816 flintlock pistol. Originally came out in flintlock, as with the majority of them, they were switched over to percussion later on. We'll get to that in a minute. But the guns themselves, they made 19,374 of these guns uh, during their production run, which was only from 1817 to 1820. They were all originally manufactured by Simeon North in Middletown, Connecticut. North made really quality pieces, and you can tell by the construction of this one that this was one of them. The guns originally, nine and one sixteenth inch barrel, fires a 54 caliber round ball. It's a smooth bore barrel. Uh, the later pistols would become rifled, but this one is smooth bore. They originally, of course, had the flintlock hammer. They had originally a hickory ramrod that would just come completely out and it had a worm on the end of it to help pull the bullet if you needed to. A bullet extractor, often referred to as a worm. The guns, when they were outdated, they took, decided they needed to do something else so they hired companies to switch them from flintlock to percussion. This one not only was switched to percussion, but it was done in a neat way by a neat person. In 1832, there was this cat from Germany that decides to come over to America. His name is Andrew Werfline, and he was a gunsmith. And he was a very talented gunsmith, and so was his brother. His brother also worked in the gun trade. By 1840, Andrew had become a U.S. citizen. He was one of those people that came, worked hard, became a citizen, uh, and he worked on guns. He converted several things to percussion from Flintlock for the U.S. government, for state, and even for private uh, purchases. He, he did a lot of the Austrian rifles, which is kind of cool because it's the guns from his homeland. And a lot of the ones that he worked on switching over have characteristics, character, characteristics of that Austrian flair. If you notice the hammer on this gun looks very similar to an Austrian rifle hammer. We know it's his conversion because if you look, uh, what they did when they switched it to a uh, percussion uh, from flintlock, they uh, got rid of the pan, which is what held the powder that caused the spark when the flint hit, fl when the flint struck it. They switched that out with the hammer and they also added this piece here, which is a bolster. On the side of that bolster, you see A period W, and that's for Andrew Werfline. He marked most of the things that he did. He did Austrian rifles. He did these. Uh, I've seen him where he did some 1816 uh, musket conversions. This one's neat, neat though, because he didn't just go in uh, and switch it out. He also had to do an alteration to it because a lot of the pieces that they were bringing those guys to switch over were outdated, used up, broken pieces that they wanted fixed and reissued. If you notice, the lock plate that should have been on this gun from the factory would have been marked Simeon North. This one is Nathan Starr. That is so cool, and it's not, and it's cool because he didn't make these guns. It's the lock plate off of a Model 1817 common rifle <laughs> that they made fit onto this gun. And when you look at it, you could never tell it. He did it well enough that I didn't even notice it when I bought it. I thought, oh, I got to look at it and I was like, that's not the normal mark on that gun. It's much cooler. It's got a great history to it. So they used a rifle lock plate 
altered it to fit just this gun. You probably couldn't switch that out to fit in anything else you wanted it to fit into. But he was a good enough gunsmith. He made it work. He had the bolster. And also, they got rid of that hickory ramrod. By the time that they were switching these over, they realized you need something to hang on to that ramrod. So what did he do? On the end of the gun, he added the swivel. And if you notice, that keeps the ramrod from getting lost. And whoever that developed that, one of the smartest minds ever because it saved, over the years, I'm sure it saved thousands and thousands of ramrods. So, cool gun, cool lock plate, cool alteration, and you'll see these, be careful, because you'll see these sold as Confederate because of that Austrian looking hammer, very similar to some of them that they used in North Carolina. This one, not Confederate. Don't let them tell you it is. It's a neat, neat gun that was converted in Philadelphia. Uh, Andrew Warfline was in Philadelphia. And it's one that you can go on to ShilohRelics.com as of the time that I'm filming this. You can go on there, you can buy it, you can have it, you can show your friends, you can sleep with it, you can show your wife, show your kids, tell your neighbors, tell your brother. I got a great gun. So, it's on there. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you order it. I hope that you know how thankful I am for everything I have in my life. I am the luckiest guy in all the world. I get to do this every day. I've got kids that love me. I've got a grandson that loves me. I've got a young lady that treats me better than I deserve to be treated. Uh, I am the luckiest guy in the world. And one of the reasons I'm this lucky is that I get to be with you guys on a regular basis. Please remember to share these. Please go on to YouTube, sign up as a subscriber. I hadn't forgot it. When we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away an original Civil War Cavalry Saber. Uh, I've got it picked out. One of these days I'm gonna do a little segment on it. I hope you know I love you. I hope that you know that you're cared for. I hope when you get that chance that you're kind to people because we all could stand a little bit more kindness. I'll catch you next time.